Hello everyone, it is I, Napalm, and I bring you a video on the game Firewatch! So, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I posted the last video. The one last one I did was uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, that's just for my own fun. I really want to play that game, so, uh, you know, I'm just dishing those out, or gonna dish those out um, as quickly as I can. But I haven't been posting any videos because I've been so uh, busy with school. But that's ended. Well, I gotta turn in something later on, so uh, technically it's not over. But hey, I have time. And that assignment's easy, so I thought let's let's start it off with the game that looks really interesting, actually. So let me just stop talking and then get right to it. All right, I gotta fix the graphics, but I'll do that. I'll do that in the next video. You see Julia. Um, she's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You're drunk. Ah, oh, crap. So what's, what's her? You know, you're in a major. And this one make you sound like a creep. You slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she says. She sniffs the air. Toxicology. Was that a burn, you ask? She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Boyfriend. Oh, nice. See, kids, when you're drunk, you get things a lot faster. Oh, nice. Are you out to see Julia? Get in. Hey, he has a ring on his finger. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about everywhere. I don't know, that's a bit of a foreshadow, but alright. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There is a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking the dog. It's badass. Now let's do the one with that Julia wants. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You hawk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart. Or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some... <laughs> a couple little idiots. That would be pretty good. In that case... We should probably get married. Yeah. I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You said she's absolutely right. Let's see if you notice the wedding finger on his left hand. I'm not. Usually in games like this, I go off on like the wrong path and just start looking for crap. For this one, I, I don't think I need to. I hope not just for the enjoyment of the game and they focus on storytelling. I wonder if shit's for run. No. So far we're just walking. But the game looks gorgeous though. It looks really nice so far. 
1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. Wait, why is he getting angry? She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Oh, wow. You ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about your evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pillow of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981, a year later. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plates from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose like a flex like He-Man. <laughs> oh, they're both really cool, funny ones. But, uh... <laughs> That's something I would do. Very nice. Exactly what is this guy trying to do? I don't know. But something tells me that, uh... <laughs> I, I hopefully I'm not spoiling the game, but something tells me Julia's dead. It's like the person from Recreation quote is like, Andy's always saying she was dead right from the beginning. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting right now. Two Forks Fire Lookout. Yep, I think something happened to Julia, and that's why, um, well... <laughs> this guy's out here trying to forget her or something. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. Oh, you still have bucket. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries. What the? F oh my god. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Buck. Jesus. Bucket gets kicked. B b b fuck the dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. Yeah, I don't. Well, she, when she's stressed, we don't want to. We don't want to beat him up and uh, have her stressed even more. You scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. Okay, that's kind of not what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's bringing more stress. You manage to scare all three of you. What? He runs away. Julie asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get laid, waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. <sighs> Agree if. Oh boy. Yikes. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Hmm. Yeah, that's... Yeah. This one is very negative, so... Um, this is what we're going to have to do. It's not going to bring good results, but... but well, well, what else can we do? You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it for you. But she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Nineteen eighty-five. Julia sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. You didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink. Wine, we'll try for yeah. Nope. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Damn. This is uh, getting pretty deep. Yeah, this is, uh, this is getting kind of little graphic. <laughs> Bucket is getting colder. 
Julia comments that it's kind of a nice, it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and you unborn child, children, little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Ah, oh, crap. Damn. to go with this one. The hell's that down there? Oh! A deer. Hello, little deer. Don't run at me. Or, all right. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. Oh crap. You start going out for her. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about getting about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. Uh you trust that she sleeps like a rock. Okay, uh See that's the thing. Um yeah. Yeah, those two choices aren't even that great. Oh boy. Cause she won't trust you with the whole chair in front of the door but why is he going out that's i made the wrong choice shit <laughs> all right the first time you do it you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone well if she was in a home or something like that i feel like they would lock the door or something like that because we don't want her getting out and just hurting herself so we're gonna be a bit brutal You go to the oh someone sent me something. <laughs> you go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law Susan. Jesus. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia's coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. And that's where Firestar Firewatch comes in. Oh jeez. Enter the lookout tower. Yeah, I kind of made the wrong choice when I uh, when I went with the whole not trying to take care of her myself. Yeah. Okay, well, in case, you know, that happens in the future with me, then I'll, I know not what not to do.
Is there anything over here? Hey, look. Thoroughfare War Lookouts. Huh. Where would you look at that? Alright. So I'm guessing these lookouts are going to be very important. Turn on the power. Okay. Let's turn on the power first. Okay. Come on. Where's the power? There it is. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Hold left shift to activate radio. Radio. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three. <laughs> what? Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> oh, he is writing a novel. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Alright, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, that's just a friend of mine. Uh, can he just freaking wait? Oh, actually, this will be a good place to stop, though. Anyways, though, but um, yeah, just so I can answer his freaking call. Um, I don't know if there's a save, but oh yeah, there is. If you decide on, oh my god, damn it, Ricky. Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna stop right here. Thank you guys again for watching. I'm gonna actually book it right now before we. Gets off. Anyways, catch you guys later. Bye. We'll get back to this game in a bit. Bye-bye.